My name's Charlie Duke. Uh, I was fortunate to have been an Apollo astronaut. Uh, we had nine missions to the moon. I was fortunate to work on five of those missions. I was twice in mission control, a backup crew on Apollo uh, 13, Apollo 17, flew to the moon uh, on Apollo 16, and was the 10th man to step foot onto the moon. First, I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. When he made the announcement, uh, I, I shook my head. I said, there's no way. You know, we got 15 minutes in space with Alan Shepard's flight and he's committing us to the moon. Uh, what a bold uh, statement. I thought it was incredulous, but the country uh, pitched in. Next year I got to MIT and uh, MIT was building the Apollo guidance and navigation system and I got to work on it. And I met some astronauts and I, it, through that work and I never seen anybody so enthusiastic and so positive that we we're going to do this. And so I began to get that excitement. Maybe I could do that job. And uh, so uh, that was the really 62, 64 the time frame when I was at MIT was when I really uh, got excited that, yeah, we're going to pull this off. We're going to do this. The war, left, no question, was uh, ripping us apart. Uh, but the space program was pulling us together. I saw the Apollo uh, with the hundreds of thousands of people involved in the program and the excitement that we're in a race, uh, we're still in a cold war, we're, but we're in a hot war in Vietnam, uh, but we're gonna win this, uh, win this uh, cold war. I went around the country speaking back in those days. Uh, I found a lot of togetherness, if you will, and the kids, the adults, everybody was excited about it and we're gonna, uh, we're going to do something that's uh, never been done before. So it did pull the get country together. Astronauts and uh, the accomplishments of the space program are still uh, respected. I think the political climate did change. Why we spent so much money on the moon and. Uh, and my answer to that was we didn't spend a dime on the moon. It was all spent in the United States of America. We had 400,000 people. And so a lot of people benefited from the technology uh, that uh, was developed in the space program. And there have been many studies showing that the, the, the rate of return on our investment has been significant uh, from the from the space program, in the space race, if you will. I'm a big proponent of technology, and, uh, and, I, and I see the benefits that uh, technology has, has brought to us and brought the world together. I just got back from India. The people on the street in India, everybody, they, they might be poor, but they got a cell phone and they can communicate and they can touch things that they'd never able to do, you know, 40 years ago. The fact that the, the technology that we developed uh, was state of the art, uh, was crude compared to what we have today, but it was the best we had. People are, are, are using technology for advancements uh, in products and economies and all of those kind of things that is going to be very beneficial can pay great dividends uh, uh, to us as a society. I don't see any conflict. Science is based on uh, immutable laws and uh, and the laws of the universe were put into effect by a designer. I'll call him God. The question of science to faith or science to religion is is really a question to, in my mind of evolution or creation. Uh, evolution is uh, just as faith-based as 
as uh, creation is faith-based. And creation is just as scientific as, as, uh, crea as uh, evolution. And so you never can prove either one scientifically. So it's a matter of belief. What do I believe? And I think the evidence now, uh, uh, in my view, points more towards that there's a designer of the universe is too orderly. There's just the 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 thought that uh, things just happen by accident uh, is uh, beyond my uh, comprehension these days. NASA was all of uh, Big Bang and all of that stuff. Just, it just happened. A couple of my astronaut buddies still hold of that view. We had a discussion last night, as a matter of fact, on this very subject. We can uh, disagree but still be buddies. I try to get the kids uh, to take the hard courses. Challenge yourself in school. Don't just try to drift through school, you know. You never know what's going to happen in your life. I mean, when I was a kid, uh, there wasn't any space program. Uh, but I kept my view wide and, uh, and I had a, a sort of a plan that I wanted. I, I, the only thing I knew is I wanted to be a pilot. Uh, and, and so I became a pilot, and then all of a sudden I was in flight school and Sputnik went up, you know, and wow, wow, there's a new way to fly. You, we go into space maybe, and so uh, you, you, I kept, I just kept going, and uh, one step at a time, and, and so I try to encourage kids, uh, not only my grandkids, but uh, the kids I get to speak to. I'm very active with the Astronaut Scholarship Foundation, and. Uh, we uh, give scholarships to uh, deserving uh, kids all over the country. And it's good to see uh, the kids being challenged today and the interest in the space program. Uh, when I applied uh, for uh, NASA, there were 3,500 applications, uh, all men back in those days. In 2017, NASA had 18,000 applications for the, for the astronaut program. So the interest is there, you know, and the, and the desire to explore in, in, these, uh, in this younger generation is, is all there. It's very exciting to me. It's a different generation. Uh, space is more accepted, I guess you will. So, uh, no, I don't see uh, uh, mounting a mission to Mars as uh, creating the same kind of uh, environment that we had in Apollo. But that's aviation. You know, you look at, uh, my dad uh, was born in 1907, four years after the Wright brothers. In 60 years, he watched his son go to the moon. He could hardly believe it. Uh, my five-year-old son, Tom, is now an adult, of course. Uh, no big deal, you know. Everybody in the neighborhood's going to the moon. You know, next door neighbor went to the moon. Uh, Neil Armstrong went to the moon. He lives right behind us. And, you know, Tom Stafford went to the moon and Frank Borman went to the moon. Everybody in the neighborhood went to the moon. And, and so it was well accepted. And, and so I see uh, that evolution of space, not from the drama of it, but just the fact that this is gonna happen. It's, I think that's the human spirit is to, is to go out and explore and, ex and, um, and discover. And, and that's the inquisitive nature I think we all have within us. And, and we channel that in different directions, but uh, uh, space is certainly a, a, a big part of it. And a trip to Mars, I think we will eventually get there. Uh, and I might not be alive but, uh, by then, but this is gonna be a challenge. And uh, I think a human, uh, species is going to accept that challenge, see what's out there.